It's Wednesday on your view. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Obiajilu Ubo. You look really nice. Dr. Mariah, how are you doing today? <laughs> you look very classy. You have to get used to the name. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mariah, how are you doing how are you today? How are you doing, Dr. BC? I'm doing amazing. Well, you look very classy today. Thank Something you. going on with you. Don't I always it's look just classy? Joy. It was extra classy. Ah, I'm it's just joy radiating yes. all around I'm you. I'm intentional. There's ah. an experiment I'm doing okay. that you have to find a way to feel forward. So you don't wait right. for the good things to happen before you start feeling like it has happened right so i've been doing it for like two weeks now yeah. and everybody around me is noticing the difference i'm yeah. going to be using it in my care mentorship yeah. program so but i, I like to try it first yeah. so that you're really glowing first hand. thank you so much oh, but today is my daughter's birthday Yay! <laughs> Which one of them? Uh, the little oh. baby. she's seven years old today oh. uh, god bless her she's an amazing amazing oh. daughter if i need anybody to get anything done in that house she's the one i put yeah. in charge Mommy's girl. she's very dedicated she goes to school she comes back she saves from her pocket money wow. every day wow. her piggy bank is full wow. everybody's envy behind the house like, ah, ah. she's so diligent when oh. i'm packing products uh, the hairs she the clothes you. she'll be there she'll be labeling she just wants oh. to little business i just love her oh. yeah i just Fantastic. love her and she looks like me interestingly i was watching our that our um, video just yesterday Oh. That, the, the, the Christmas video we did. Yeah. Right, so I, 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 all of them were there dancing. dancing. <laughs> I was just like, oh, look at this kids. They're all grown. Yes, that, that video for a long time, you know, we're going yeah. to be. But it's how you doing? I'm fine, no, but I'm stressed with Lagos traffic. You know, I mentioned yesterday, somebody should, you know, uh, control traffic at the mile to um, ramp into uh, should the, should the expressway or Apapa or should the expressway. It's important because we can't continue to suffer. That the traffic is unnecessary because the yellow buses would not conform. Mm. The roads are blocked now. They are working on every area of the road. Also, the same thing is happening. I don't know why the contractors on the Badagri Express will decide to shut down traffic all the way to Vox. Mm. So people are stuck in unnecessary traffic. This is the second week counting. I have been finding ways to get to work. It's totally unnecessary. We can do things better. We can open up avenues for people. To, we can make life easy. It doesn't have to mm. be like this. Yeah. Really? I have a lamentation this morning because I didn't get enough sleep. I mean, oh. I, for like between 2 a.m. and 5, I just couldn't sleep. And what was I thinking of? I was thinking of the NDLA matter. matter. Oh. I just, like, I was so heartbroken because we had this, uh, the spokesperson yes. come here yesterday telling us the plan to burn. Was it, was it Monday he came? Mm. Telling us the plan to burn off all the cocaine, mm. the biggest um, hit Nigeria has ever done, where they were to arrest these barons and seized the cocaine and they got civil society they got even the arrested barons to witness the burning mm. they got even the the dea from the u.s they, they have a, a certificate from the court mm. authorizing them to burn Go ahead. With only, only 24 cocaine just for nigerians to have this loose statement on air saying us on, on social media online mm. Saying us like, ah, film trick, what do we can't do it? Believe that. You know, I'm thinking, do you want to evidence? burn this country down? Like, you just want one sentence, and then you just say everything just goes down. And then those, and what was most painful is like, these are young women we're celebrating, they're working hard mm. at their job. It's not easy so to we work want in Nigeria. To discourage them now. You it's not discourage easy. them. It's not these easy are staff of NDL. Every single day, wake up in the morning, they feel like they've just made a major bust. And some clowns go on social media and condemn the work they've done. It's that's, really, really that's heartbreaking. That's and, and it's also to do important better. for those who jump on, you know, such posts to comment to think. Just a think. Bit, just, mm. just probe what ah, you're hearing. It's just so if they were to house that uh, amount of cocaine somewhere, to get, yeah. don't you think it will eventually get back to society? Yeah, exactly, it's don't you think the shortest thing is to show the court, get the order. Don't you think your younger brother, your younger sister can actually get in those get cocaine? If, yes, it. probe, just probe it. Somebody a bit, in yeah. Nigeria is doing their job. I need to appreciate it. You just condemn it. It's really sad. We, Let's go a break. Okay. We come back. I didn't sleep. Really? Do me go. Let's go and break. We'll right back. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
right, we're going to start with the nation. <clears throat> Nigerians face harder times as CBN raises interest rate. Picture of Lagos State delivery of trains for the red line system. Akele Dolu's mom for burial, November 12th. NDLA sets ablaze 1.8 tons of cocaine. Presidency to Akele Dolu, no state can arm security outfits. Suspend Ogun governor's aid, Rufai, jailed five years in the U.S. Hmm. Atiku, I'll be stepping the stone for Igbo presidency. Oil theft on Polo's gunboats storm Niger Delta creeks. And all 18 presidential candidates face litigation, says INEC. All right, which story are we starting okay, with? So, Amoteko, um, finally, the presidency responded. Since that, we have been, that the governor of Akari, uh, been talking, the, says. has been talking, they decided just now to respond saying that, you know, no body, no state was granted approval for the use of, fire, of, of arms and ammunition for their state security outfit or their any regional outfit for that matter, and that only the NSA, as the National Security Advisor's Office, is empowered to authorize the use of arms and ammunition, you know, following any outfit. And they went on and on and on. They went at him for, you know, for, for politicizing security. Mm. They said all sorts. But the question is, the Casina security outfit displayed and displayed yes. firearms outside. So what's the consequence yes. for that? Uh, and that the governor cannot boldness. say uh, say something unfounded yes. claims that you that how you give. So for the governor so said that he must have saying, um, reasons. What is the consequence of what the governor did if the NSA did not approve of it before you say somebody's politicizing because it took you two weeks. Yes, Maybe so you were investigating realize. your own authorization mm -hmm. in two weeks for you to respond. So now that you've responded, please investigate Casina and the governor of Kassina and find out if they have any authorization to carry firearms and display it in that manner. And then do something about it. Mm. So uh, the former militant leader, government Emmanuel Polo, a.k.a. Tom Polo, uh, said has deployed dozens of gunboats in Niger Delta Creeks to fish out pipeline vandals, uh, illegal refiners, and illegal oil installations. We remember that the um, commander for the movement for emancipation of Niger Delta, that's Tom Polo, was given a contract recently. 4.5 billion monthly surveillance contracts from the federal government and NNPC. And so, despite all the controversies that came out, out of mm. it, he was able to settle down and commence operations. And they said um, there were dozens of speedboats and gunboats comprising operatives of the Navy, Army, the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, uh, and they embarked on their first operation on Monday. The joint operation took over 1,000 youths that accompanied the armed men to the operations for their first assignment. And they said the youths were recruited from the host communities. So the idea is to ensure that they recruit about 20,000 youths from those host communities, find a way to mm. give them those jobs so that they can further secure our pipelines. Yeah. So yesterday we had, a, we had the DG of the Lamata here on, on, on your view. And coincidentally, it was the same day Lagos State received the red line, the cars, um, they received them from, the, from Milwaukee in the United States yesterday. They took delivery of all the red rail cars. And um, according to the Commissioner for Information, this is such a huge milestone for the Babajide Somolu administration because uh, they're going to introduce rail modes into transportation in the Nigeria's Commercial Nerve Center. And also, if you recall, based on what the DG said yesterday, the red line is a 37-kilometer train. I think it's going to be running from um, Agbado, and starting to Oyingbo. And um, I think, and she also told us yesterday that by first quarter next year, both red lines and blue lines should be completed and ready for commercial use. Okay, let's move on now to the punch. Hmm, what first I must say that the presidential candidate for PDP, Atiko Voka, has paid all the front pages. And taking so, the story taking in the all sun. the major stories, but either yeah. way, we'll take the stories that we can find. The punch. Um, 2023 article governor's land in Abuja, Tinubu will be delay campaigns. Uh, business face cash crunch. Interest rate hits 15.5%. 350,000 fraud. $350,000 dollar fraud. America jails Abiodun's ex aid for stealing 20,000 identities. Ogun State reacts. Um, I have that story. So this happened in Washington, D.C., I believe. Um, let me find that story. So many of you heard the story where we had, where we had um, Abidemi Rufai, who was an ex-aide of, of Governor Abiodun, 
uh, Governor Dayo, um, Dakbo Abiodun, and he's been in prison for five years in Washington, D.C. Mm. According to reports, and many of us have followed that story, where he was um, said to have stolen the information of more than 20,000 Americans to perpetrate series of cyber fraud. Mm. And this happened, um, in the, in the, of course, the, uh, recently. The total amount, 350,000. So the total figure comes at $350,000, yes. Mm. And um, he said that for his attempt also to steal $2.5 million from the United States Department of um, including $500,000 in pandemic-related employment, unemployment benefits. So this is a really, really sad situation. But let me find the response of the Ogun State governor, government, which is not in this article, but pretty much it's not a good we story. Can get that later. That, um, we can always get that later. Okay, yeah. so there's a report in the uh, Punch on um, an undercover report by Punch for, on one way. And so what they discovered is that some police officers, some members of the um, Lagos State um, staff following the auction in over 134 vehicles, they found out that there is a practice of removing of um, one way signs and then you know, misleading, deliberately misleading uh, motorists to enter into a one way and then arresting them for violating one way. And this report is, is seriously damning, if I can use that word. I hope that. Did you get the name of the place? The the mentioned areas were reported yeah. in Yanoworo, Olojo uh, Drive, and I have experiences on Yaba. Mm. Personal experiences. I would be wondering, you'll be on the, on the map, mm. and the map will be saying, traffic is light here. You turn into that place, and they come on your car. Mm. And I'll be like, where's the one way? They'll say, you, don't, you cannot see it. They'll confuse you. You keep looking back, and then somebody would, you know, so, as if they want to raid your car. I had that experience, and I know that these things happen. Yes, it is wrong to use one way. I would never deliberately use a one way, but it would be even worse off to have your own citizens, your own law enforcement officers removing the signage you deliberately mm. just to arrest okay. you. Mm. Right. When you know the consequences story. is possibly impounding or destruction or even auctioning a mm. person's car. So another I think story in the punch, yeah. up. Yes, yes, I have another story in the punch. So um, the Lagos State Police Command on Tuesday arraigned two residents of Orile Okoba in the Agege area of the state before an Ogba magistrate court for allegedly assaulting an official of an e electricity distribution company, Keja Electric. So um, the men were charged with four counts of assault, causing breach of public peace. They've been in court, and the matter was adjourned uh, to November 15 with um, a bail sum of 250 and shorties. However, uh, residents of the uh, environment were claiming that these electric, um, eco, sorry, Ikeja Electric, always come there with police to harass residents to pay their bill. And they were tired of the estimated billing that they give to them. So they come there and sometimes with the police, the police will be shooting in the air while they are driving people to, you know, pay their estimated billing that they were tired. They had placards in front of the courts shouting. So I think the government needs to investigate this. I don't know why um, Ikeja Electric will use police to collect money. And these people have been saying that they want yeah, the prepaid billing, not the estimated billing. They have to do something about this. Mm. Mm. Okay, moving on now to Daily Sun. Presidency in my victory will be stepping stone for Southeast, says Atiku. PDP crisis, I won't abandon Wiki, says Governor Otom. More cracks in APC over campaign council mm. as key party leaders are gripped, maintain distance from the PCC. Let me start with Governor Otom. He said that he remains on the side of Governor Wiki. What's that word? Bagada, big bagidi. Gidiba. Gidiba, yeah. Gidiba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? He's on the side of that because there were rumors that he was supporting um, the chairman, Iocha Ayu, and he said no, that he has his very close friends with, with, uh, with Wiki. According to him, he says that um, the Bennett governor said that the party leadership has not been fair to Governor Wiki based on activities that took place during the primaries and the convention. He said, we have not been able to use, deploy the internal uh, conflict mechanism within the party to resolve the issues. However, he has not moved away from the party and he will continue to sympathize with EK, but he will definitely support whichever pres um, the presidential candidate of the party. Mm. So there, there are no issues of him decamping or mm -hmm. supporting other, other factions. Okay. Yes. So the major headline that has been on all the papers, yeah, so the presidential Abubaka candidate Atiku. yes, of People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, yesterday was telling the people of the Southeast that his presidency, if elected in next year's poll, will be a stepping stone, stone to the zone producing the president of Nigeria. So he will start first, then they will be able to lay on top of him and rise. So he consulted with the leaders and stakeholders of the party from the five 
South Estates, and he was accompanied by his running mate, uh, that's the, um, the governor for Delta State, Okowa. Uh, Okowa. And then he went ahead to say that um, he's determined to revive the nation's economy. He understands how industrious the Southeasterners are, and any government that needs to you know, make impact must carry the Southeast along, that they have so far supported him for a very long time, and is there to ensure that they can build on their business acumen and move the economy forward. He went ahead to promise a whole lot of things that he's going to be doing for Nigeria. What we're talking about right now is about unity, mm. carrying everybody along, right. and he has the capacity to carry everybody along. I think people should read the article. Yeah, they were well outlined. Yeah, he mm. talked about restructuring. He's going to restructure, make mm. sure that the federating states have enough power to mm. come together. So, mm. And restructuring is not just for one person. So um, he also begged the youths to stop the seat at home on Mondays because mm. it's not paying them. Right. They all need to work together. Okay, let's go on a break. Well, game on. Game has started. Game on, yeah. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we continue with our reviews. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience. Millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built, state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the East Bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria, on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9 Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment, and hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story.
Interesting. We're also going to take um, Vanguard now. Mix outlook for parties as campaigns begin today. I took a story inside Vanguard uh, about the hashtag answers report, which has actually been submitted officially to the federal government two years after. This was presented by the um, chairman, Justice Suleiman Galadima, retired, and he gave um, he handed it over to the ES of the Nigerian Human Rights Commission, Tony Ujoku, who noted that compensation is just part of one step of, uh, of, um, of, um, of the road to justice on this hashtag, of this NSAS issue. Furthermore, he said, and that's the Nigerian Human Rights Commission, said that they still need to hold the indicted officers of the Nigerian police accountable for these violations of human rights. Uh, if you recall, like I'm just run, going to run down very quickly part of the highlights of the report, which is that um, there were a total of 295 petitions, um, 95 were decided and 33 were struck out, uh, 54, 54 complaints were withdrawn, 57 referred to the Human Rights Commission, while 56 others were judgment petitions, and 72 police officers were found guilty for having various human rights infractions, while 25 officers were recommended for dismissals, 15 others had to suffer reduction in rank. So, the good thing is that the report was actually implemented mm -hmm. across board and, and um, about um, 39 petitioners of extrajudicial killings got the 220 million naira compensation, which we read also in the paper. So we saw the start and we saw the finish. So now, now it's just for the government to implement the final stage of the federal government to ensure that the police force um, in, um, ensures that it completes this totally. And so Nigerians can see that justice indeed was served we'll for see. the people. In the story in Vanguard? Yes, so okay. uh, for the past months now, I think there's been a lot of lamentations uh, by motorists plying the Asaba Onicha Bridge. Um, there's a lot of traffic going on there. I know there's been this construction for the second Niger Bridge that's been, um, they've been trying to do. So the first promise was that they would have completed it by October, and commuters were expecting that at least before November, December, when you have that interstate Christmas rush the road would have been completed they're complaining that they stay there for hours a journey that's supposed to take just five minutes takes them two to three hours sometimes even four hours on the bridge and they are appealing to the government to hurry up and complete it so most of them were a bit disappointed that it's not going to it's looking like um october is no longer feasible and you know nothing is being done about it but the minister minister fashola spoke recently and was saying that before december the second niger bridge would have been open for mm. commuters so there's still a bit more hope and one of the things that delayed them was the COVID-19 because they had st they were coming initially at fast speed but for COVID and then every other thing and they also complained that some community members were you know looking for one contract or the other which was really delaying mm. the work going on there mm. but let's see how December works. December, the there are also, also provisions that Lagos is about too. So we are, a lot of things are wasted. A lot of work is going on, yes. December, the second, second Niger, Niger Bridge, Bridge November, December, December. Lagos is about to express we are waiting. Mm. So the Benue State Emergency um, Management Agency's um, Executive Secretary has spoken about the flood they're experiencing presently in Benue State. 23 persons have died, Whoa. flooded away, 74 others seriously injured. 116,000 people displaced presently. Mm. Mm. And the one that is most disheartening for me is 14,000 hectares of farmland washed away. Oh, so God. not only did they lose where they live, they lost their livelihood as mm. well. 4,411 houses so far have been submerged in water. And the pictures are not, They're not funny. They're gory. Mm. They're asking, he's, he's saying that the state is overwhelmed, they can handle it. They're asking for federal government assistance. They're looking at humanitarian organizations to help. I hope that the governor will leave politicking and also focus on what is happening at home. When you lose farmlands like that in a state that is very agri-based, it is, it is supposed to be painful for any leader and enough to concern yourself about. Okay, I was going to now move on quickly now to the garden. I'm not sure if we took garden. Uh, let's see, economy in rare credit squeeze as CBN continues with 20-year high interest. Court orders INEC to publish names of candidates in a do governor's faction. Wicke brings back legacy 600 aircraft abandoned in Germany. Stop inducing dividing Christians. Northern elders advise APC. Court nullifies Ogun PDP partnership, KB Central Senatorial District primaries. And finally, 2023 elections. How Nigerian politicians deceive electorate by Peter Obi.
I actually wanted to take that story by Peter B. He was saying that, that uh, I, had, I didn't take that story, but I, I think I read it very briefly. And it was, was admonishing um, those who were speaking to that many politicians will come and try to induce you that we shouldn't have an election of a device, a decide, a divisive elections, that people should be voted based on their competence. Mm. And um, it's not about anybody's turn. It's about the fact that the Nigerian people's turn is the people's turn. Mm. And it was going on the fact that even if he gives you money, collect it. But the point is that you must <laughs> vote, your vote your conscience. I think mm. that's what you're saying in the nutshell. <laughs> I think that is all we can take on the uh, front page review. As I said, today marks the start of the political campaigns. And yeah. we could sell that from all the papers. Everybody's not doing front page. Uh, it might be difficult to get some real stories, but we'll have to be looking um, beyond the political stories. But the truth is, I think Nigerians should um, be careful, especially using um, negative energy at this time, mm. especially bad words. These are things that can cause damage with your candidates. Yeah, true. So the best thing for us to do is let's, let's, us, let's us be clear on what mm. we want yeah. and be very clear on what we're looking for and then ask for Nigerians to vote their conscience. It's not about the crying placard. It's mm. about waking up that day, going, going out line up <laughs> and voting. All your speaking English is not going to be not welcome. Program. All right, let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll start with our hot topics. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Looking fresh for your dates? Get even fresher with Close Up. New Close Up Triple Fresh Formula. It cleans deeply, fights 99% of bacteria. on TVC. Hmm. So, wondered what happens who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So, if you catch the drift, then you're on to something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities, right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Television. Real stories. Real emotions. Real anger. Real love. Real tears, real lost. Television just got real. It's lights. If you could tell Saga anything right now, 
what would it be? God will judge you. <laughs> Wrong Why camera. Why you be like that? <laughs> oh, can't go have hard life. Don't go to a woman. Go have hard life. Real action. Do you ever like go out with any of your female fans? Why well, you went in? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> wow! Tune in to the only reality TV review show on television. Reality Check on TVC. Thursday night from 11 p.m. You've recently made a fine spot announcer on television. I know. Fine, like, say it again. You've recently made an ugly spot announcer on television. When he started the show, it was full of life. Uh, but yo, you don't look very... You're a stripper in former life. <laughs> <laughs> you see, OJ, you, are, you're, you may be light-skinned, but you're not very enlightened. True, we true. What is the standard dimension of a football pitch? You are giving me the shapes of the balls, so you should know the shape of the balls. Okay, yeah. Standard dimension of a football pitch. Of a football pitch, yeah. You should know now. American football is called soccer. No, no, no. Thanks for staying with us. This morning we're going to be discussing culture. And culture in different ways because recently uh, when the queen was buried, many people admonished the fact that the British were able to preserve quite a bit of their culture. Mm. And the fact that Africans always seem to want to look away from culture, beliefs, and tradition. We're constantly trying to abandon what is ours and embrace what is foreign. But then we bring that conversation to an issue where a young widow was recently um, shaved, her hair was shaved off her. And there's a culture that says that when you lose your spouse, or well, there's a tradition, I would say, that says that when you lose your spouse, your head is shaved off. Mm -hmm. And um, some say there are things that which was done with even the body of the water that is used, that is used to bath the person. There are different cultures and traditions in different places within Nigeria. But the question, therefore, is which cultures are we keeping? Mm. Which ones are we discarding? Should we begin to look back and see how we can preserve? Or should we even interrogate the reasons why these things exist in the first place? Maybe there are real reasons. Maybe we're just looking at it from the <laughs> foreign look, from the foreign prism and eye and, and, and glass. If we ask our forefathers and mothers, why do you shave off the hair? Maybe there's a legitimate reason. We don't know these things. Mm. Yesterday, we had the... Um, Mayoress of um, to talking about in this area, we want to bring in different cultures because we must embrace what belongs to us. So, mm. how do we know what is right and what is wrong? Should we condemn this act? What are your thoughts on this? Or are there people who believe in this tradition who can call the show this morning mm. and explain to us the legitimate, the real reason, the moral reason, the moral justification for shaving off a woman's, a widow's head? It's something we like to talk about. You can call us on 081270. 53687091390769487698. You can also tweet to us at TVC Can I please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets? So we don't like to condemn people's beliefs because I don't want to believe everybody is is backward. I like to believe that some people, you know, once a little if you show them a bit of um let me give an example. <laughs> so my mother in law, you know, um stays with me, right? And she has a bed that was made by this man that she and her husband revered. This man is a carpenter, fantastic. Baba this, baba that, you know. And when we got married, she made it look as if that bed do is the best bed. I bought a really nice bed and I liked it. But she insisted that I carry that bed, that I bring the so bed, that, that bring that, that bed. That bed, well, I'm telling you. The bed came, I shall use it because just to make her happy. So we got a new house now. And she was telling us, please, that's my bed, that's my bed, though. No problem. We hadn't bought in the new bed. But she now went to go and sleep on the brand new bed we had bought. And she slept on that bed for she the first time. She felt good. Eh? Said, eh? I'd be like, <laughs> she won't go back to that bed. I'm not saying, mm, I don't want that bed again. Mm. And I was telling her, I was talking to my husband, I said, 
This is your mother. She forced us to go and bring this bed, but she had not tasted mm. this so, new one. Mm. She had not seen. She's mm. so locked up in, it has to be Baba mm. Nikos bed or nothing. Mm. So how do we refine our mind? Can mm. we, how do we, let, let, let's, let's break this down a bit. Let me, let me hear your thoughts on this. So, um, this, this, uh, you know, personal sentiment, not the one that culture has brought. So mm. a personal sentiment, like I love the fact that my father-in-law gave me Joko when I gave birth. Mm. That, you know, this is how you sit there as a woman. I kept that you could see the thing was the, mm. chop, the wood chop and throw it away. So that's sentiment. But if we test some cultures that we have to, with conscien to conscience, fairness and justice, mm. they would not last a second. Mm. And we have a lot of them. A lot of them. It's not just about whether, whether they're serving or not. We, from the day they were created, they were made to serve a few. The tradition of Abu Baku was made to serve a few. Mm. The, uh, there's an evil saying that, you know, if you see, how does my friend say it? If you see a dead body, yeah, you wood, that, is not, that is not family member, that dead body looks like a log of wood. Mm. Mm. Until it comes home, Close touches to you, you mm. Mm -hmm. that's when you know that eh, eh, this thing is not good. And we have too many like that. The customs of, you know, widow shaving, the one we were talking about earlier, a lot of them like that. Now we must push aside. Those cultures encourage slavery, and mm. it did exist. It encouraged the big man. <coughs> it, it, it encouraged where um, this, um, there's this culture of loan payment by service. Mm. So you, your person takes a loan, there's no proper arrangement, the person becomes a slave. And sadly, it exists till today. Yeah. To the, to the person who gave out that loan. It exists till today. We have the culture of lock him up, with, you know, abusing the systems because these are our ways of life. People don't see different. And we, if we test those things by conscience, we push it all, we wear the shoes, mm. we would understand that these things need mm. to change. Look, look, customs look. of marriage, mm. customs of um, uh, underage marriage, we have too many like that. think this sentiment is what fuels culture? So, for example, the Ababa Kuda, the person that dies with the king, mm. the reason why some elders agree that you have to die with the king is, well, if you're a king, you can't just die by yourself. I mean, they, mm. they, they have, so they have to that, honor you to the, the land, land of the dead. Yes. Yes. The person that is dying, they honor him. Mm. The person that is dying, did anybody mm. ask? Or if the person who was saying, no, we have to honor king, if it was this child that needed to be buried with the king, mm. will he not test it? He would, tell, he would mm. be like, no, this custom has no, to no, go. No, has mm. to and that's, we had, there, there was this custom in, the, in Calabar then, where a person, who, a woman gets pregnant and marries another, or goes to another uh, husband with the pregnancy of the first child, and the, the house where the child is born becomes the uh, parent of that child. So the father would be in court outside, hang, hanging around trying to get their child. If you test it, if it comes to you, do you want to? You will not you, like it. You will not like it. We mm. have too many like that that need to stop. Mm. Yeah. And sadly, those, those of them that Let me come to you, BC. Your thoughts on this? So I'll start by saying, let's stick to the good parts. <laughs> so everything has the good side and the bad side. Mm. And culture, as we know it, is a way of life of the people. Uh, when the communities were coming together, deciding we're going to stay with this tribe and that tribe, they were you know, testing out some theories, what will work. If this happens, how do we react? How does the community react? If um, somebody dies, how do we treat the women? If this happens, you know, they were using some of those things at their level at the time with the mindset that they had to sort of protect themselves, protect the community. It was more about protection. But now, as we progress and evolve, we need to start asking ourselves critical questions. Are these ways of life serving us? This culture, is it still serving us in today's world? Um, this culture, is it still something you, another person will hear and it will sound good to them? We need to keep questioning and keep modifying and keep changing. You know, like you have products that after every year i remember those days i saw one gramophone very recently and i was like where did they mm -hmm. yes i went to my mother-in-law's house and mm -hmm. then my kids were playing music they were able to attach the youtube to the gramophone. yeah and i've been looking for something like, i'm like where did they <laughs> mommy where did you keep this you know but now we don't have that anymore we have very slim bluetooth that's how life should be mm. because with every dispensation and every generation, the mindsets of men are constantly improving with knowledge. Even the children we are having these days, they come like follow come. They are like technologically savvy. Mm. That's how they have been made. They have been, and if you check their DNA, according to some scientists, these new human beings who are giving birth to now are modified. Mm. They are different versions from us. Mm. I'm not joking. No. This mm. is science. Anybody can research it. So, we need to start asking ourselves, does this dehumanize this person? This 
culture, this treatment, does this dehumanize this person as a human being? Let's define what dehumanizing is. Good. Because well, let, let's talk about because you said let's go to the good part. Yeah. That, that can be relative. Stick to the good let's stick. Well, that can be relative. Yeah. What's good to you may not be what's good to me. Mm. So we can decide. So for example, now let, 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 let me stay on you for a minute. Okay. When somebody dies, the perception is that okay, a woman should be humble. Yeah. You should look uh, wear a sackcloth, as they say in the Bible. You know, show show be solemn at that mm. time. Mm. And part of a way of showing show a contrite spirit. Yes, mm. but part of the part of the, the part of looking that way. Is shaving off your hair mm. because your hair is your beauty, is your mm. glory, is that mm. thing that makes you radiate. Yeah. And we're saying at this moment, because you just lost somebody, mm. shave it off so you're back in the house. Mm. That was probably the reason. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not right for somebody to call it yes. the yes. reason. Yes. So it's a way, wait, 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 wait. it's a way to get you because now people lose their spouses and one year later they are I me. Mean, they don't even act as if their beggar has moved. So on. we're just supposed to stop their life because somebody has died. So they have that uh, system. Mm. Because of the limited knowledge they had, the people who made those laws had limited knowledge. Right now, we have new knowledge that people grieve differently. Mm. See, pause, no verse. They did not have that knowledge because they, they had <laughs> those practices to punish. And I would explain. No, some way. Let me, let me explain. You see those tough practices? It's relative. Wait now, let's wait. So, we, people become widows. So, also the people, men become widowers. Yeah. But the, the practices for men, is this that uh, strenuous? No. Mm. Because it is believed that the man is allowed to enjoy his life. But mm. a woman is a suspect. Yeah, so that's if another part. If husband dies, yeah. reason is because she's already made to carry the burden of mm. abuses in her marriage. Traditionally in Africa, mm. you will stay put mm. in an abusive marriage. And mm. if God forbid, you go, yeah. your husband dies before you, you that you're suffering, you, you survive. Will suffer, yes. You will test you. Yes. They want to test your innocence. Mm. So another woman will be made to make you go through what they call proof of innocence. Mm. Shaving off your head is to make sure that your beauty is mm. reduced mm. while you're supposed to be in mourning. Mm. And in every culture around the world and religion, women mourn longer than men. Yeah. Why is it that way? Then they will, after shaving that, they will force you in some way to come and you will go through traditional practices. I remember, I will not mention names, someone whose husband died. And the first thing that came to her mind was, I'm going to have to travel. But if I travel with clean, beautiful clothes, I will be judged as being insensitive and mm. not grieving enough. So give me the rags. This is someone who can afford clothes. And we started scouting for the worst clothes before she could travel. Mm. Because if she dares to come and appear like I'm appearing mm. in grieving, they will say, ah, this one, no, you, now this one, your husband died. Yeah. yeah. But now it is women mm. who start this conversation. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. These practices, if you now turn it around, another woman, it's until when the things are going around that women started to talk. The practice of women not being able to inherit. How did this, how did we even start? Mm. All of us were born. But some of us can inherit, some of mm. us cannot. Yeah. How can it even make sense? Yeah. Yes, so so um, I understand that argument, and that's one of the things. I, I don't want to think that the people who, like our forefathers who set those laws were about punishment. Mm. It wasn't about punishment. But over the years, as it kept evolving, people will now add their own wickedness to really deal with other people. That's what we now see, and that's why... Every culture must be subjected to test mm -hmm. and mm. critical thinking mm. from generation to generation. So you keep sifting, you keep pruning till you take out those things that no longer serve you. And you ask the question um, about um, uh, humanity. How when somebody is dehumanized, when somebody is disrespected, when the dignity of somebody is stripped, that's dehumanizing. And elders can sit down and assess it. This person who is going through this treatment, to what end? Mm. What are we looking for? Mm. Are we accusing her that she killed the husband? Or we're just trying to uphold culture? And you know how Nigerians are. We are followers. The cultures, most of us never questioned. My fathers did it like that. My father's fathers did it like that. Nobody asked mm. why they started mm. it. Mm. This is what we need to be doing now mm. as our culture progresses. Mm. So those, uh, some of those things that we see now that no longer serve us, the government needs to wade into it. Because... Don't forget that in the villages, like now, if anything happens and I have to go to the village, I'm going to be faced with you mm. mothers. The mm. elderly mm. women are seated there waiting for me to come. You are be, and they will deal with you because of that knowledge mm. that they still uphold. All right. The government needs to step in and do something. Give government out of this. That's going to be no government. government, is government, 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 government. government. We'll be right back. Government. All of their choices. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Wake up the champion in your child. Give them energy to go further. Milo Active Go and the natural goodness of malt, milk, and cocoa 
helps wake up the champion in your child. Thank you. Hi there. Hello, Paul. You can price shop, but you're always saving on everything except for here. This is where you're throwing money down the drain. How? On this cleaning product. Impossible. You need the new Hapik Toilet Cleaner. With just one thirty naira started of Hapik Toilet Cleaner, you save more. Apex Stick Formula stays longer, so it cleans 10 times better. Wow, Helen! And it saves because it's only 39. Giving you a sparkling clean toilet and great savings too. So, where does football live? Football lives here. Yeah. You could win a trip to the FIFA World Cup plus other amazing prizes when you spend a minimum of 50,000 Naira monthly or $1,000 with your Visa card in at least 5 transactions. The Zenith Better Life promo is back and it's bigger and better. You could be one of 20 lucky customers to win 150,000 Naira every 2 weeks from now till January 31st, 2023. To qualify, simply open a Zenith Bank account and maintain a minimum balance of 5,000 Naira. For more information, visit www.zenithbank.com forward slash better life. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. Bye, Mom. He's going to play in this weather. Uh -huh. Why did you let him go? He might fall ill. And if he doesn't go out for practice, how will he win more trophies? To protect our family from illness causing germs. think you can outplay me in this game of wits and knowledge? Can you go seven rounds without flinching? I meant answering seven questions correctly. How well can you hold your liquor? If you're curious, then join us for the most exciting conversation and games with your favorite celebrities on 7 of 7. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw ether material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known, for when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking advocating, protesting, as the arts are meant to be. You've recently made a fine spot announcer on television. I know, fine like, say it again. You've recently made an ugly spot announcer on television. When he started the show, it was full of life. I, yo, you don't look very... You're a stripper in my life. <laughs> <laughs> You see, OJ, you, are, you, you may be light-skinned, but you're not very enlightened. Truly true. What is the standard dimension of a football pitch? You are giving me the shapes of the balls, so you should know the shape of the balls. Okay, yeah. Standard, standard dimension of a football pitch. Of a football pitch, yeah. You should know now. Thanks for staying with us. You know, so we're, we're going to be taking a few um, comments on social media, but, you know, sometimes you think to yourself that maybe it's time for us to have a formal structure mm. to review culture. You know, maybe it's part of the work of the Obas, the, the, the elders, the emirs, 
to have a certain time, maybe every 10 years or every 20 years, where they review, we should document all, all the traditions, the things, yeah. all our proverbs, <clears throat> the, what, what makes your, your culture unique, mm. should be documented yeah. so that as we are evolving, a new other comes in and is reviewing because right now it's just based on somebody yes, said, say. he said, she mm. said, they said, and this is mm. how they say that, that like it, that lady, that, mm -hmm. that's what you know. Mm. Right There's now, nothing where we can reference and yeah. say, you know, this is how what we want to do. So, um, a few years ago, I think about two, three years, I traveled to Asaba uh, for my aunties, one of my aunties' uh, burial. And then when I got there, uh, it was just a very little gathering. We went to um, the mortuary, brought her back. Just a few people gathered, family members, a few relatives here and there. And then they did the ceremony very mm. soft. And that's not the Asaba I knew. Mm. We used to tie cloth for seven days and dance. You see that dance I was dancing mm -hmm. that day? Yeah. That's the kind of dance we dance, you know. And I was asking, I said, Daddy, what happened? Because I went with my father. And he said, ah, that the government came home and reviewed everything. Mm. That's in Delta Asaba came and reviewed everything. So before we would have had like canopies up to 10, 12, you will settle Mwada, you settle uh, Okulago, you settle the youth, you settle mm. different, different, as in feeding, cooking, everything. So to do burial in Asaba, you will spend money. Right. If you don't have, you go and borrow, nobody cares. Or you will keep your, your uh, cups in the mortuary for years till you are ready. I'm not mm. joking, mm. to do the burial. But I came and uh, everything was just very smooth. And, and he said, yes, yeah, so that the government, in fact, if they catch you, Hmm. If they catch you in a barrier and it's a large gathering, you will be fined seriously. The it. government waded in. Hmm. Now, why am I calling the government? Before, we used to have our traditional uh, rulers as the superior authority. Not anymore. Hmm. The government supersedes. Even yeah. if an Obak makes a pronouncement and the local government, fight. exactly, or the That's governor it. says, no, no, this is not going to happen. Hmm. So we need them to get involved. Yeah. Now they can liaise with the Obas. And say, okay, this and this and this is what we think we can do, work together and ensure yeah, yeah, yeah. that we lift up this. And I didn't see, when I came, I didn't see my aunties shave their hair before they know now. We shave. In fact, as a grandchild, when my grandfather died, our head was shaven. Mm. My head was shaven mm. for a grandfather, not mm. husband, though. I was just very small then. Let me so, but I didn't see all of that mm. anymore. Let me take this call from Port Hardcore. I think it's God's will. Good morning. Are you there? Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Please, this is Gus Gill in Chicago from Port Harcourt. Welcome, Gwen. Welcome. Welcome. You're live. You're listening to the TV. Please, there. go ahead. Please. Please, the issue of culture and tradition. Please, I want you to know that... I want you to know that some of them are spiritual. Okay. Some of them are spiritual. And, and before you do any abolishment, you go for consultation. And if you disobey this tradition and some of these customs, if you disobey them, they have a serious implication, spiritual implication, that might cause your life or any damage in your family. So there are some that were made by man, but some are being some are spiritual, being done, being made by the gods. And most of them are ancestors. That's what you need to know about customs and traditions. Most mm. of them are ancestors. Mm. Thank you very much. I mean, that's another perspective. Like that, so many of them yeah. are spiritual. They're from, the, they're from the ancestors. And so maybe we should consult the ancestors. We need right. to consult <laughs> because the truth is, no, the truth is, we need to right. review. Right. Because I have found Review with the ancestors, right? right? give you an example of such a culture. So in mm. Benin tradition, all the way to Delta, where we had the Bendel State, we have a common custom called the Idiogbe custom. That custom is where the first son to, uh, must inherit his father. Mm. Mm -hmm. To do that, and the, the, sorry, the ancestral home must be inherited by first sons and they must carry out burial rights okay. to be able to qualify. So if a son fails to do burial rights, that son cannot then say he has qualified. And the court upheld that custom. Reason is because the, the rationale, that's the, the, the reason to maintain ancestral homes mm. has some form of logic. Mm. Even in, uh, in English law, you have people put it in, in document that this home remains the ancestral home and must be given generation to generation. generation yeah. And so that custom that we, we did not write, of course it was unwritten, but we had a way to maintain that custom course. made sense. Mm. And it was first son. Where a person doesn't have that, his brother then fills in. If a person is, mm. doesn't have a son, fills in. But they, what they are trying to show is that our own customs, all the, the, the duties of family, where families have their duties. I'm not from a royal, but my mom is from royal where they have some duties they carry out. Or oh, my husband, for instance, whose families are kingmakers, where they have some rights they do. 
the first sons are raised to understand those rights. Mm. Yeah. Not be the one where we know go just understand. So somebody's so, child, God forbid she make mistake and cross a tribe to marry. They will just wait for the husband to die before her. Mm. Mm. The thing that she doesn't understand, they will tell her that if she doesn't do it, she has not done something spiritual and that she will see some form of consequence. Mm. And some also, also, it's totally unexplainable. I am from Edo. I've seen so many customs that if you change them, nothing will happen. And we see nobody wants to take no, no nobody wants because to because they, they don't for that. hardship that you sort of promote. Wait, when a person dies, they will tell the children who are mourning, who probably are in secondary school, mm. to carry out burial. Why does the family, the people who are empowered, who are older, like, yeah, not older. come in and say this custom is compulsory and so we must put money together and do it for these children who are under 10 years, yeah. who are under 18, whose father has just passed? Why do you compel children that are under age like that to say you are opposing custom? So, kind say, of custom so are let's go back to what our last caller said. Our so there are older. cultures that you have to consult with the, with the, with the gods. No yes. doubt about that. But there are some we can logically review. There are some that we practice <clears throat> And we say this is what is bad because we are testing it over um, we, are, we, are, we are testing it with wonder morality and fairness and humanity we're saying you know what let us test this and be sure that is this humane enough mm -hmm. to carry on let me take this call from abia state uko are you there yeah you're live go ahead please good morning uh. morning sir good morning sir please um what i want to contribute in this is that um most of these cultures have something to do with our ancestors. Like in my place, <laughs> they, they, it's a taboo for a married woman <coughs> to have an affair with another man. So now, but when man, the uncle. woman's husband is dead, now shaving the hair is a symbol of respect from the woman to the deceased. Telling the man that uh, there is nothing I hold as a respect again. Maybe, you know, a woman's hair is a part of her beauty. Yeah. So the woman is just telling the deceased husband that even this beauty, I'm laying it because of the love I had for you. Right. So she will shave her hair so that um, after that now, the woman now can now have the right to remarry. Okay, okay, let me ask you a question very quickly. Is there a right for, for if, if, if a woman dies, a husband, is that something the husband does to show the same respect. kind of respect mm. for the wife also? What does he shave? He doesn't no, like, a, like, like, see, uh, if, the, if the woman dies, yeah. there is a lot of things that the husband do also to okay. show that he loves the wife. Like, for instance, eh, the husband will not go to a, a farm for a specific period of time. Mm -hmm. The husband cannot go to, a, let's say, traditional celebrations, mm -hmm. maybe like New Year festival, maybe any mm -hmm. occasion. There are certain specific occasions the community will do. The husband will not attend to show that he did morning the delay. Mm -hmm. uh, or it will be for a particular period of time. Right. So, but you know, uh, thank you. So let's, let's wait. Like, let's yeah. wait. Mm. Let's wait this conversation. Mm. Now, that brings us back to what uh, Nima said initially, where the laws seem like ag against the women. Mm. So, a woman will shave. That's something personal to her. You a know, hair the that will hair. grow back. Oh. No, it's it, grow back whether oh. it grows back or not, your hair is the, your glory. Mm. That's the glory mm -hmm. God has given to you. And you, you are not. You didn't wake up to say, "I feel like cutting because I want a different style." Mm. You are shaved to the end with mm. razor and comb i've mm, experienced it mm, before mm. i know how it is you know how you look for a few days and a few months to, to gain back yeah. exactly so, play so play you play. are shaved which is oh, personal right. a bit of dehumanization or heavily dehumanized very personal mm. but for the man he can stay away from celebr uh, celebrations and ceremonies and staying away from the farm like if true. you are working in lagos and you, you lose somebody of course you take some weeks of work you will not just resume immediately that's exactly how it is so if you mm. place it alongside each other it doesn't matter one mm. person is the female they are paying more than the men but let's come to the part of this culture that mm. we talk about and the ancestors that mm. we are calling mm -hmm. in my study i'm beginning to realize that most of those things we said spirits told us is a lie 
I'm not joking. That's, that's, no, 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 hold that's on. A this is my day. personal, no, no, hold on. Hair. This is my personal you, opinion. Okay. Because these ancestors have a way of changing their minds. I don't want to go there. No, hold on. When, now. when, this, is a rich, when this is a rich elite in the village that it happens mm, to, mm. the ancestors will quickly change their mind. Mm. So we need to call a spade a spade. Right, right. Negotiate. If you feel that mm. this is this came from the ancestors, mm. please, can you negotiate with this ancestor that this mm. is not paying my people? Mm. It's simple. Let me give Let's you. leave it there. So okay, you don't want us people have a custom where if their daughter is dating you, and God help you, you go and have an um, extramarital affair. affair with her or premarital affair with her to result in either her pregnancy. death or pregnancy, mm. and you did, you've not come to ask, you cannot bring the body on. They will now lock you and body hmm. for seven days. Imagine. Where you will have serious trauma. What did you think that? Was it spirit? Is that just justice? Mm. He's so traumatizing the way you have traumatized them. Simple. So they pay, they pay you back. spirits tell you that one. If the, you the reason why I want us to tread carefully yeah, I know because these are people's me. cultures. And yeah, I don't want no, us to. Well, so so, 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 so let's be very careful. Let's so let's be careful. 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 let us and if you see the consequence of it in your life, in your daughter, would you, would wish you allow it, it for another person? Mm. My that parents had four girls. They did not take any girl home from mm. any time mutilation. Mm. So if that custom, they want to... When it comes to you that time, the ancestors will not be speaking. That's all I'm saying. Please, let's, okay, let's go on a break. Let's, let, let's go on a break. <laughs> <laughs> we come back. We continue. We take a few more calls and come and stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. You've recently made a fine spot announcer on television. I know, fine, like, say it again. You've recently made an ugly spot announcer on television. When he started the show, it was full of life. Uh, yo, you don't look very... You're a stripper in your former life. <laughs> <laughs> you see, OJ, you, are, you, you may be light-skinned, but you're not very enlightened. Chewy Chew, what is the standard dimension of a football pitch? You are giving me the shapes of the balls, so you should know the shape of the balls. Okay, yeah. Standard dimension of a football pitch. Of a football pitch, yeah. You should know now. American football is called Wait, soccer. No, relax. <laughs> if it's monkey post, you count. Actually, standard. Football. Yeah, standard monkey post. Standard football pitch. Yeah, standard monkey post football pitch. There's different types. No. You're going to drink. Bring it now. It's 110. Don't you have data? Bring it. Bring Don't it. you have data on your Are phone? Are you scared? Dude, 110 to 120 yards long. That's not the answer. Dude, I said, that's drink. what I said. No, you, bro, you got to drink. You got to drink. Oh, yeah, I trusted you. Yeah, I'm that guy. How could you? I'm that guy. No, like, I, I'm she, upset. She, you're talking about the guy. I'm upset. Now we're going to do talk, tongue twister. I'm going to twist other parts of your body, bro. Like, well, if I catch <laughs> you outside. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues and last but not the least a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate and yes you guessed it women so if you catch the drift then you're on to something we will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Will you remember these
with you, I already feel like I trust you. Because you can't even you outside, have that you intention. Me I swear. Every Tuesday, you can join the battle of opinions on the battle of the sexes. So what is social media display of affection? Love in private, break up in private. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to take a few comments, and I have one from engineer Ajibola Tijani. He says that experience has shown that no culture is permanent. It's only a matter of time. Culture evolves from generation to generation, and we can um, see that there's evolution around us. According to him, also, in the dark ages, human beings were used for sacrifices, but it has changed over centuries. He even reminded that recently, uh, twins, if you recall, mm -hmm. were tagged as evil mm -hmm. in some mm. communities, but, they have been, but that has since been abolished since Mary Slessor. He also added that um, ignorance helps some bad culture to subsist in the age of technological advancement. So culture shouldn't be static in a mm. nutshell. And the mm -hmm. truth is that we get that, but who determines what stays and what goes? Because as I said, everybody was really celebrating the culture of how the queen was buried. You know, mm -hmm. how the whole tradition was seen and the world stood at God and said, wow, these the guys, I mean, I saw people still... They they never the and the so the, the, so the point is that we need to how do we demystify ours mm -hmm. and refine it enough that we can still teach it to our children. Okay, uh, let me quickly take Ogumola's yeah. um, comments. Culture is explicit. Mm -hmm. Don't complain <clears throat> until you marry into it. Do your due diligence. The problem is that there is, there is no equity in custom. What applies to men um, should ap um, also apply to women. And he talks about his opinion. Now, if you know some customs, like I chose not to marry a particular Yoruba tribe, I knew that when their women give birth, they are made to go through another additional suffering, no salt, nothing. They will use cold water to bathe their children. I <laughs> investigated. Are you serious? I cannot, mm, where I come from, with a pamper picking. Mm. So if I choose to pamper. It's a Yoruba culture. It was a Yoruba culture. There's a select Yoruba. Hmm. I'm not going to Shinek. say. Yeah, I don't know the Yoruba culture. I will tell about you after the break, <laughs> during okay. the break. So I found that, and I kept asking the women around that, why is this? Say, you know, they don't used to ask. You cannot ask. It was like, I'm going to be punished to marry you. And I told the person, I beg, please be going. Because what I don't understand, I cannot do. Mm. You know? So sometimes these customs are upheld mm. by women. They are upheld by those who have already suffered it. Those who know the pain, but they're saying, you can't question. Let one person start. It was one person that chose that my twins should not die and sought help of a missioner. Yeah. And then started keeping those twins. And then they found that the twins grew up and really nothing bad happened. There's a village here in the southwest where everybody there, hardly a family that do not have twins. And now everybody there is progressing. Mm. But, you know, it was a custom then that you should just destroy twins. If you go to Ogun State, amongst the people, there are customs that, you know, they encourage having those twins. So when you don't test it, you will not know. Mm. Then the custodians of those culture, who should also question it? Will now say, let's call the... The uh, oracle, the, 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 the priest, the chief priest should come. Chief priest would say on his own bias what he thinks. He would say the spirit spoke to him. Mm. The, his own spirit spoke to the entire village. Yes, okay. The kings now, who are presently in today's world, lavishing and enjoying and allowing oral carry, tradition to happen in Lagos, they should ask themselves because it's be, it is beyond partying regularly and doing societal images that is kingship. Mm. Kingship is also testing your people and ch checking the welfare of your people. Mm. And it must, it must continue I beyond... Think, I think you just you know, hit a very important nerve uh, because the truth is that we must continually test these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our chiefs should not just say, they're not, they're not, they're not constitutionally recognized. Mm. They don't, we have, there's work quiet. to be done. Yes. There's work to be done because yes. some of these cultures are not enhancing mm. the people. Mm. So we need to review them with these cultures. Let me come to you, please. You, you, cannot, you cannot do above the knowledge that you have. The cultures we're holding on strongly to today is, was given by the spirits based on the knowledge the spirits had. Let's even look at the scriptures. Spirits are all no, known. No, hold on. They're all known now. Uh, which one is on? Are you not yeah. a spirit? Spirits. You're yeah, a uh, spirit. I'm a spirit. Everybody here is a spirit. We're just here for a physical experience. That's what we're doing. So we need to understand that. Let's even look at the scriptures. When God needed to control his people mm. at the time, according to the Bible, he gave the laws. He gave the Ten Commandments. Mm. But all over the centuries, he realized that the Ten Commandments will not work anymore. And what did, did, did he do? He brought Jesus. And he brought a superior commandment, not to abolish the first commandment, but to fulfill it, which was love and grace. Abi, 
So there's a, you, you can follow the pattern that you see that there's a time for a review. There is no um, culture that cannot be reviewed. Okay. And how do we review it? We pick the ones that dignify our people. Mm. We pick the ones that give respect to our people. We pick the ones that people from other places will come and admire and say, ah, wow, we have beautiful cultures. I don't know anytime we talk about culture, we're always looking at the mm. negative side. Mm. Nigerians have beautiful cultures. Let us uphold those. And those ones that don't serve us anymore, let us put them down. Let okay. us find a let way take... to use superior knowledge, right. superior right. love and grace All right. let me to take this work call. on those. I have a caller. Good morning. Are you there, Hassan? Good morning, Mariah. You're live. Go ahead, please. <laughs> He's laughing. Uh, good morning, Anima and Ubiagilu. Good morning, sir. Abek, 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 I will start, I will start with the short story about Ubiagilu. A man told me a story about this Osu caste system in South Eastern Nigeria. A man that spoke very well at Ubiagilu went to the village. They spoke against this Osu caste system in the border line between Imo and Adia. He was very rich, versatile, well traveled. Do you know what was put on him? They said, No problem. Please, set an example for us. Because they don't marry from Osu people. They're not calling their other. You spoke well to our son. But please, please. You have a daughter, you have a son. Please, can your son marry to Osu? That was where the guy was found to found it. You understand? Mm. You see, there are some cultures. Mm. If me, as far as I'm concerned, culture is religion. They don't believe in it. You understand? But it's not there. There are some cultures we should oppose. Yeah. But there are certain cultures we should be away with. But people have already, already ingrained in people. We are such, we are people, we are, we are traditional people before Islamic and Christianity. And people are finding it difficult to detach themselves from it. They mm. are being Muslims, they are being Christians. If you go to certain Yoruba areas here, you see a Roma and Muslim dancing to court. You know, I have a brother. That's married to a South African, and um, when, when they were having one of the weddings in their families and everything, and um, the, I think, I'm not sure which culture, the part the, the, from exactly from South Africa, but the man was, was then, was, well, they were naked girls, they had their breastless, they were braless. Girls were dancing around him during the wedding ceremony, hmm? braless, hmm. and they were just having and everything. And they had on their beads okay, and their okay, skirts, okay. but they would do it. They had, they, they had, they had, they had, they had, they had um, no, 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 no tops on. Mm -hmm. And my brother was thinking, okay, I'm, I'm getting married to this guy's sister. <laughs> Is that what you know? <laughs> I'm going and to experience. It was, it was interesting to watch mm. because I don't know the. I, I just, I just watched the video and I was asking my brother, ah, what's that? Like, That's how they do it. Too. I hear that we're in their own too. You know, <laughs> they will do for me too. You know, <laughs> and so somebody might define that as dehumanizing. Others will say it's our culture. Maybe, maybe they are virgins, maybe they are young girls in their house. I don't know what, the, what they are, but somebody can say, you know what, there's a way we can rebrand this mm. and make the international community appreciate and, even, and, 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 and adore and respect what we hold. Mm. So you are, might see it as dehumanizing. Shaving your head to you might be dehumanizing. So another person like, it, wow, what a sacrifice. Mm. What, a, what, a, what, a, what, a, what a solemn moment for you as a woman. Wow, what, a, what, a, what, a, what, a, what a season for you. know. Yeah, yeah, so we, we can look at it in different ways. Mm. It depends on how you look at it. Everything. Mm. So, so I'm saying that, is it that we are constantly looking at it, but judging it from a different angle? Or right. can we see from the angle of those, the custodians of that culture? So we've, we've highlighted a few cultures here, that, and we have seen how it's caused trauma to the people who are made to carry it out. Yeah. So if I love my husband, and in his culture, I heard that women were made to shave their heads, yes. you know, after he, 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 their husbands die. And I love him so much, I just feel that, ah, mm. this is one way. I'm looking for yes. all the ways to honor him, and I chose yes. to shave my head. Shaving at my head. Emphasis and I on choose. choice. Emph yeah. Emphasis is on choice. Yeah. Mm. You know, even though you don't already die, you don't see whether I carry or not. not you don't send me a message. But I chose it. 
Not that some group of women now say, come on. Mm -hmm. How dare you survive your husband? Exactly. Now you felt It's so, not always so like that. No, the scenario is not always like that. Nima, don't make you look at it like that. Well, see, you are Sometimes, a ghost yes. girl. No, no, no. no. There's some scenarios like that, mm -hmm. Nima. You are right. But there's some scenarios where I grew up in this culture. I was born. I saw my mother's head shaved. Mm -hmm. I understood it. I've accepted it as my way of life. And I'm willing to shave my hair because it is who I am. Did you ask your mother if she The man who called. Did you ask your mother if she liked it? Your mother already passed away. I'm asking you, you who really, called mm, on the show, show yeah. told us that it, that it can happen, that ancestors, mm. that if something happens, mm. because that is his belief system. That's his belief. And exactly. to the believer, it is true. There are yeah. people who have stayed there so and like, revolted. I said, this is dehumanizing. There are rich people in that community that those things, they ask them, would you want to do, let me tell you how it is done. Would you want to do this or will you pay a fine for it? They give rich people a choice. Mm. Rich people are given a choice in every culture. Should we do this or will you pay something in let lieu me, of it? Let me go on a quick break. But the poor person has no choice. That's what we're mm. talking about. Mm. Let's Give go, us a choice. Poor Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll wrap up on this. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. The federal government, through the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, announces the availability of COVID-19 and childhood vaccines nationwide. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's Your View. Join us on Your View 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. Will you remember?
Amber on TVC. think you can outplay me in this game of wits and knowledge? Can you go seven rounds without flinching? I meant answering seven questions. Thanks for staying with us, Silence in Studios. So, um, let's take a few comments. Yeah. Nina says, my husband's family has this culture of eating unsalted and unseasoned food when you give birth. Mm. Eight days for male, seven days for female. I was told he started when a jealous wife made the junior wife eat said food after birth mm. when their husband was not around as punishment to the wife. This made the junior wife mm. pronounce a curse on future births and not doing this means the child will die. Mm. A lot of us want this to change want to change this culture, but who will experiment on her child? Mm. Mm. Now, because of that fear, you see that they use... She, she unscripted also, says, what happens when cultures clash? Yeah. Sorry. So, we, my mom's cousin once wanted to marry a Yoruba girl. As custom in Yoruba land, you must prostrate. Mm. But my mom's cousins are royals. They don't prostrate. A future king cannot prostrate. We explain. They say, lie, lie. They will not agree. They will not agree. After a few hours of begging, the people started going back to the village. And once they travel past uh, Shagab, that's, that's they, the marriage. they started blocking motor. Mm. Now we should come, we should come. They can then compromise. When cultures clash, you can drop culture. Mm. So really, mm. there's nobody that... So if you can drop it at that time, why, why don't drop the ones that are not saying Chichi and Scripta said, imagine, say, you get long hair. After years and years of training it, they will not ask you to cut it. Um, Ulua Shehun says, BC, to every culture, there's always a bypass if you can pay the sacrifice. Okay. The reason why it looks like it's for the rich is because they can pay the price. Now, Yibo we do pensu. I do eraser. So you know how we know how to bend the rules when it comes to setting people? Can we give people a choice? If you cannot do this, right, what they do in my village now, if you cannot do certain things, you will pay in lieu of. Mm. You drop money for it and then they will sort it out. There was a time I was called, there is a, a part of the burial of your grandmother that was not completed and everything. My father called me on the phone and said, Daddy, ask them, how much will it cost? Let me send it so that they can do it. And I sent it and they did it. Mm -hmm. And they moved on. So if we can do that, mm. why do we keep holding on to those ones that want to use to punish people? Mm. Let us ask her. Well, this person has, has, the truth. This has a balance. Timila Yakorede says, in the old days, one of the reasons women pay more was because men are the ones who made more sacrifices for the families to survive. Mm -hmm. That's why women need to show respect to men when they pass. But today, a lot needs to be changed, and I agree right. to that. I think we can wrap up on this. I think, if, I think in a nutshell, nutshell, I think it's, it's time for us to speak to the others, the custodians mm -hmm. of our if culture, yeah. their work. And it, that there's work to be done. Yeah. It's not mm -hmm. just about carrying your shekeri and going for parties mm -hmm. and attending political rallies. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of review mm -hmm. that must go on in the tradition and culture of the people because at the end of the day, it's about the people. Mm -hmm. What enhances, what, what, is, what is serving to mm -hmm. the people, what serves mm -hmm. your people, not what is dehumanizing for people. people. So if, if, if that's all the others are meant to do, that in itself that's enough. is huge. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of work to be done and I think that... Um, we need to start reviewing all these um, cultures that don't actually empower women, especially. Yeah. That's all we can take on this segment. We'll come back with bringing our guest in for uh, who's a cardiologist. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience, millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award winning 24 hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live 
from our custom-built, state-of-the-art news headquarters. PVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the news bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV station of the year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria, on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9 Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment, and hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC Communications Story. Will you remember the Thanks for staying with us. If you're asked what are the most important organs in the body, some will say heart, others will say brain. But today we'll be speaking on how to maintain a healthy heart. Join us on the show um, is the CEO of First Cardiology Consultants, Dr. Yemi Johnson. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Yes. It is. So the heart is such an important organ and... Um, we, get, we hear a lot of cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, um, heart blockage, and these things happen so suddenly. You know, sometimes the most healthiest, I mean, I've, lo I've lost one or two people who are, they're, they're, they're healthy, they eat healthy, they, they're exercising, and somehow they just fall off. And you're thinking, what happened? Say, so we had a heart attack. How did that happen? So I'm really interested in this conversation uh, and how do we maintain the health is a bit it's kind, of, kind of a broad question mm -hmm. but how do we start to have a healthy heart okay well you've already said uh, most of the things you eat healthy you exercise what i can tell you is about 90 80 to 90 percent of the heart attacks i see are preventable mm -hmm. 80 to 90 percent of heart attacks and strokes are preventable wow and um i can also tell you that in Lagos, the people who come early with a heart attack, because if you come early, we can reverse the, heart, the damage. We can, if you come within the first six hours, there are things we can do to reverse the damage. Okay. And uh, what I've seen is the people who come early are usually the foreigners, the Indians, 
the Caucasians. They come, as soon as they have chest pain, they come in. Oh, wow. And we can fix the problem. In fact, last night is a clear example of what happened. A, an Indian man came in with chest pain within an hour, opened up the blockage, fine. He's not going to have any uh, mm. repercussions on the heart attack. Mm. Nigerian, half his age, came in 48 hours after. Wow. He's got extensive damage. Oh my God. Whoa. So, and I remember when I've gone for international conferences, they ask me, what do Nigerians do when they have chest pain? And I hate to say, but most of my colleagues will tell you, the first thing a Nigerian would do is pray. Pray. Hmm. Then go to church. Then rub. Anointing bath, rub. Or anointing oil. Then when all those things are not working, then they might go to a drugstore, and then maybe to a hospital. Wow. So, we don't really understand what so i'll talk about chest pain first yes once you're above the age of 40 chest pain should be taken very seriously wow. even if i have chest pain now i can't tell that it's a heart attack just by how it feels you have to go in and have some tests done hmm. all right they will do an ecg run some blood tests and if it's a heart attack there's certain things that need to be done or we wait we wait till the damage is done and then you live with the consequences, which is you'll not be able to walk from here to there without being short of breath. You might be on oxygen the rest of your life, things like that. So it's important to take chest pain very seriously. If you have chest pain, have it checked out. Yeah. What's the level of the pain that would get? Because sometimes the body will just pain you. Like, no, like Nigeria, yeah. body will body pain you. Just pain you stress, yeah, as I'm talking to you right now, I'm having serious pain here. At the back, yeah. It's hurting you. Me. Know? So what's the level I'm that looking for a doctor you because I need to get to pain. a doctor? A back pain can sometimes be deadly. Wow. Not all the time, but sometimes. Uh, so any pain up here, check it out. Just have it checked out. It, it's not that you're going to be admitted or have some expensive Dr. Johnson, tests. Let me, let me ask you a question. Well, I'll come to you with the name. The right. truth is that when I have a pain right now, yes. I go to a doctor and I enter his office, he's likely to tell me, take painkillers take pain and send me home. He's not likely to do an ECG mm. like you would do. Because you're a cardiologist, so you're talking, you're, you, you have an idea. But most doctors just say, eh, let me give you, what are you using? Let me, let me, let me, let me increase the dosage to ibuprofen or something else. I hate to say that's what happened to the young man yesterday. Oh. Um, okay, when I was in medical school a long time ago, we had, throughout my five years in Idi Araba, we had one person come with a heart attack. It was rare when we were in school, one person, and it was a Caucasian. And uh, all of us were brought to see the patient and uh, see what the heart attack looked like. So for many doctors, heart attacks are still something in the textbook. Mm. Mm. But unfortunately, the incidence of heart attacks has increased in Nigeria for several reasons. One, we are not eating healthy any longer. We are not exercising. Uh, in those days, unless you had a car, and very few people had cars then, you'd have to walk to where you're going or take a bus and walk. So there's some exercise. Now you park right at the gate, and okay. then you take an elevator one floor. Mm. No exercise at all. at all. We're eating all these uh, small chops at parties of puff, uh, chicken wings, and all these things that are all fried. So yeah. we're eating healthy. There's pollution in the air. I mean, we're not eating healthy. There's pollution in the air. We're not exercising. We're, there is an epidemic of diabetes in the country now. Wow. Uh, and that is because of obesity, being overweight. Most of diabetes is caused, type 2 diabetes is caused by being overweight. So that level has gone up. So we have all the risk factors. Hypertension, another big risk factor mm. wow. for heart disease. So we have all the risk factors and uh, we are not looking after them. Okay, so you, you talked about the tests that have to be done. And I have had to, for my loved one in 2017 kept complaining of chest pain. And based on my experience at the time I had my child, any chest pain is heart condition. So we went for all the tests and the ECGs, everything just kept hitting the brick. We didn't find the cause of that chest pain mm -hmm. and eventually it subsided. So if you have to consider what you have to spend and mm -hmm. you know, to find out you. what, a, 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 what is what the, the cause of the chest pain. And nothing, you're not seeing and, nothing. And you see nothing. That's a Nigerian factor right there. Compulsory. Like go to other pain. Consult, pain, 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 pain. Expensive tests. Oh, bless you. Well, you are correct. Um, not all chest pain is heart disease. In fact, most chest pain is not heart disease. Uh, so yes, 
most of us pay out of pocket for these tests. In the US, in UK, it's your insurance that takes care of it. So the paradigms are different, and it, uh, that's true. You can end up spending a lot of money and not find out the cause of the chest pain. Mm -hmm. The important thing is this. When you go with chest pain, the characteristics of chest pain that you need to be very concerned about, it's central. It's like somebody sitting on your chest or a baby sitting on your chest or like your chest is in a vice and it's gripping. It goes up your neck, it goes down your arm oh. and you start to sweat. All those things are signs of a heart attack. Mm. Why would right. those that just drop dead? Huh. That's a whole different ballgame. Uh, a heart attack can make you drop dead suddenly. All right? If you have a big heart attack, you can suddenly drop dead. Are there many people who drop dead, who had symptoms before they dropped dead? They just mm, didn't tell anybody. Didn't, yeah. mm. A lot of that happens. But one of the warning signs is you walking up the stairs, you feel some pressure in your chest, and you have to stop. That's a very big sign that there's something going on. Mm. Exertional not chest pain. Another one, especially for men, is pain during sex. That's a big sign. Really? They won't tell you that? Yes, it depends on the person. But uh, pain during sex is another important thing. Pain side. in the heart. In the heart, during not sex. the chest. The oh, chest. In the chest. In the chest. Yes. Yes. But your heart is supposed to be doing with your Yes, but heart. pain. <laughs> okay. Pain, pain is that different. Makes, yes, pain is different. Mm. Uh, so that, because that's exercise in, its, in mm. of itself. Yeah. Mm. And uh, so people ask me, is sex exercise? I say yes, but exercise should last at least 30, 45 minutes. Okay. So it depends on the duration and all that. But pain with activity is an important sign. Pain that radiates down your arm is an important sign. Mm. Pain that's associated with shortness of breath or sweating is an important sign. Mm. Now, if you have pain and you move your arm, the pain gets worse. It's not likely to be your heart. Mm. Oh, that's okay. likely to be something in the muscles. Oh. All right, so you can rule out some of the things yourself. All right, so I know that first cardiology consultants um, is a rather... High-end hospital, yes. you know, many people can't afford it. Yes. But I know you're also doing um, the Healthy Heart Foundation, mm -hmm. which supports people uh, for cardiov cardiovascular interventions. Tell us about it. Is it because it is that they feel that, that you're trying to just reach out to people who can't afford it, or are you just trying to do a sensitization on how to help people in getting healthy hearts? Healthy you already heart. answered the question for me. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let me give you some background. I trained in Nigeria as on scholarship throughout secondary school, university, you know, that time was during the oil boom mm. and all of us went to school free. You people might not have enjoyed those periods. Um, and I went to the U.S. right after youth course, spent about 30 years in the U.S. And it used to irritate me seeing patients come abroad for minor things. They end up seeing one of us. Yeah. You know, they come to, from Nigeria to America and see a Nigerian and they sometimes get disappointed. <laughs> but... I can tell you in, in the U.S., in any field in medicine, there are always Nigerians at the top of that field. Mm. There, there are many of us, and they're always at the top. So I felt bad and said, okay, I've spent a long time here. Let me come back and give back to society. And um, it's been the most difficult thing I've ever tried to do. Mm. And cardiology is expensive. All the tests we do, all the procedures we do are expensive. So now, yes... We've brought the technology back home. We can treat heart attacks. We can treat strokes. We can do a lot of things. But majority of the people cannot afford it. Mm. And it breaks your heart when you see somebody who doesn't have the money but needs the treatment. You see, and uh, as a single person or one person or a company, we can't really cover all those right. people. And it's one of the reasons why we've never made a profit, uh, first cardiology, because we end up treating mm. people. You can't come in with a heart attack and we say, well, you don't have money, go away. Uh, it's not ethical. So we decided to, we thought about it, my partner and I said, let's, let's see if we can um, come up with a foundation. Because we've seen many foundations, charity organizations, uh, some have lasted a few months, some have done very well. We said, if we do this thing properly, we can reach out to a lot more people. Okay. And that is what we're trying to do. Uh, unfortunately, health insurance in Nigeria is not yet where it should be. It started. It's not going to... Healthcare to the masses is not going to improve until health insurance is, uh, mm. is nationwide and is uh, working properly. 
So this is our own contribution to see to the, to the people who, who can't afford this thing. Mm. So what's the foundation about? Tell us about how, what, what, what do you do? How do you, okay. how do you become part of the foundation? Or what All right. What we did was we started it just informally. And uh, we followed the example of Ghana. Okay. I went to Ghana and all the citizens are subsidized for heart conditions. Sudan, the same thing. Oh, really? Yes. And Ghana's is run by retired bankers. It's not government. It's an NGO. But the people, the people on the board are retired bankers and uh, people in the business world who are well respected. So with that kind of board, people know that they're not there to just take your money. Take your money. Yeah. So we got that sort of board and uh, they've been very helpful. And uh, what we haven't we're launching the board, I mean, the foundation officially tomorrow. Okay. Oh. All right. But we've been working for about a year. Okay. And we've treated about 50 patients. Wow. Mm. Um, so how are you funded? Who's funding you? We've been reaching out to people informally, WhatsApp, Organization. Yes, friends. And uh, the response has been overwhelming. Wow. It is, it is, once people know it's for a good cause, yeah. they will give you money. Mm. They will give you money. First thing they wanted to know is first cardiology. You people, you're already making money. Why should we give you money to treat yeah. poor people and all that? So we explained when we do charity cases, we charge the foundation at cost, what it costs us to do okay. the case. So there's no margin Extra on it. Margin. It's whatever it costs us. And we've also been lucky. We've partnered with a foundation called Voom in the U.S., which is a Nigerian uh, foundation, but a lot of the people there are Americans. The American, I mean, uh, foreign, well, doctors, nurses, mm. all sorts of people who volunteer their time mm. and come to Nigeria to do surgery. Okay. Mm. Uh, so we've partnered with them, and with the two of them, we've been able to really bring down the cost. Okay. Uh, so I've been procedures. to first, card first cardiologist, and I wonder if your facility can take the crowd that would respond to. Free so heart, yes, free heart, free yeah. heart conditions. Um, oh no, we can't treat everybody. Uh, no, no, we no we I, I'm hoping that you're able to, you know, partner other facilities where your people can use. You know, there are other. For example, hospitals. you partner with the hospital uh, yes. in maybe Ikeja, mm -hmm. and you can have some people go there. Yes, treat, or, yeah, do, do they all have to come to first cardiology? Yes. That's a great question. Um, right now, we've partnered with uh, Abuad in Ekiti, mm -hmm. and we've done some cases there. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, because Lagos is just one place. Mm. We've done some cases with Abu Adi Nikiti, who also provided services at cost. Okay. So we just came there, did the procedures free for those people. Some patients, it's subsidized. Mm. Or excuse me, some patients are subsidized, but we try and just reach out to as many people. We intend to go out of Lagos. Next stop is probably Abuja. Mm. All right, Abuja would probably be the funnel for the north. Mm. And uh, we want to go there and perform procedures there. Now, what, what would be the criteria to pick the people you mm. finally attend to since you can't reach everybody? Okay, it's two things. One is they, they need to have something. They, they have a cardiac problem. So that's easy. Clinical, we can make that diagnosis. And uh, there, there are lots of people who need help, especially surgery or interventions. Then how to figure out if they can't afford it or not. Because, yes, yeah, some people will game the system. Mm. You have seen somebody driving... Uh, a brand new um, exhaust Mercedes kit. and says that he can't afford. Yes, mm. uh, you know, trying to game the system. Um, so we have partnered with a group who specializes in things like that. Check so it. they, they vet the people them. and verify and let us know that, okay, these people can't afford it and then we try. But it's not a perfect system. Mm. But the key is, I'd rather treat somebody than not to treat. You know, it's kind of refreshing to listen to you because... Mm. You're a Nigerian and mm. you're trying to give back. And because we see a lot of people who want to jack by. You've jacked by and you come back. And, you know, and, and I like the choice of words you've been using. I've observed that even when you're talking about the insurance, that we're not there yet. So mm. you, you didn't say, we don't have, oh, it's mm. horrible. Oh, we don't know. But you, are, you seem like you're optimistic. So mm. do you really think this foundation... There's faith in there. You, do you believe that this foundation would really... That we need more of you. Do we think, do, how do we get more people like mm -hmm. you? How do we get more Nigerians like you? Those who have gone... Because I, I, I have a theory that it's not about getting Nigerians not to leave country, this country. You can't do that. What you need to do is bring back those who have gone like you. Find a way to, to get them home because many of them are done. They're tired. They want to come home, too, but they need a conducive environment. So what do you think we can do to get more people like you 
to do stuff like this to help Nigerians. Uh, okay, I can tell you this. There are quite a few of us. Well, I'm no longer them now, but quite a few of my colleagues yeah. abroad who want to come back. Yeah. Okay. And the things you say is what bothers them, security, uh, where to stay. Uh, most of them, their kids have already gone to school, so yeah. they don't have that expense on yeah. their head anymore. So it's security, where to work. Most of the hospitals don't have the equipment they need. Uh, so at least I know now there are several hospitals being built in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, private companies, equity But in firms. Lagos, not all there. Well, it is, yes, they're in Lagos, they're in Abuja, they're in Port Harcourt. New ones being built that I'm aware of. Okay. There's Ekiti Abouad. It is amazing what uh, Afe Babalala has done there. It is amazing oh, what he has done there, the equipment and everything he has. Uh, it's actually amazing. It's, uh, okay. It was mind-boggling when I went there to visit. Oh, wow. It's amazing. So there are people like that who spend their money back here and put it in healthcare. Now it's the professionals that is the problem. I'm actually working very hard on a system. And there are several of us. We have a group called DFC, Doctors for... Africa. No, Doctors for... I don't know what DFC sounds for, you know. Doctors for <laughs> Progress. Also. Anyway, something, yeah. Uh, it's all diasporan doctors who... Doctors for change. Doctors for change, thank you. <laughs> when they see... They, uh, I'm, I'm going to hear a lot about that, forgetting the see. <laughs> uh, when uh, we've been thinking of how... And bring them home. And quite a few people are coming back okay. in different capacities, different specialties. Yeah. And I can tell you now, in cardiology, everything can be done in cardiology in Nigeria except heart transplant. We will get there shortly. I heard they did one in Ibadan. No, no, not heart transplant. No, kidney transplant. Kidney. Oh, yeah. I thought I was okay. Not your heart transplant. And so, and so that's so good to hear because sometimes we wait for government, government, but yes. you are private people coming together, putting an organization, saying, you know what, this is, you, you guys can come back. You are finding a way to... Get yes, to come we, back to Nigeria. yes, because we are committed, and government is a different ball game. Exactly. Uh, let me leave government alone. Yeah. Uh, that's a complicated, complex story. Right. Mm. But orthopedics, everything in that can be done in orthopedics can be done here. A lot of people don't know all these things. Imagine yeah. that. Yeah. Kidney transplant can be done here. I've seen that Kidney transplant can be done here. Yeah. Orthopedic and heart neurosurgery. neurosurgery. Many of these things can be done here. Okay. Uh, a lot of people don't know. But all the money now, the money is the problem. It's not like yes. they don't know. There's this is one reason why we've got this. Yeah. No, no, the ones that are money. traveling out are going for whatever yeah. reason. It's not because we don't have the capable hands here. It's because they just feel they, they are more trusting of the system over there that yeah. at least oxygen will not fail you. Yeah, you will not be there. looking for yeah. oxygen when yeah. you need it. So that's yeah. why they travel. You have but, Nepal. Mm -hmm. Your yeah, issues down. exactly. Yeah. So they just prefer to go there. But we know we have. If you, uh, there was a time during the COVID nineteen, now my father in law did a surgery, very major one. It was done here. Okay. So what would be the minimum that you'd say um, a person must have or totally free to benefit from this? To benefit mm -hmm. from this, you know, you were talking about some people would have to be subsidized. If you subsidize health for some people and you still have to find a millionaire, that's not subsidy for them. What, what would you say is the minimum? Okay, the way we've done it so far, mm. based on the recommendations from the group that helps us uh, screen patients, mm. those who can't afford, there's some people you know cannot, they can't even afford the test. You know they can't afford it. Uh, that's going to be completely free. Mm. Uh, that's, I mean, free to them. Between us and the Voom Foundation, we found ways of trying to mm. cover those costs. Yeah. We found ways of trying to cover. Because it's not like uh, you're paying the surgeon. Most of the surgeons, most of the anesthesiologists, I have to mention the group that helps us, A3C, uh, Abuad, all our professionals, first cardiology, we don't get paid for doing the charity cases. Mm. We don't get paid. So it brings down the cost. Mm. So, so there's a lot of uh, charitable people around. Doctor, any advice on how we can live to avoid, if this is actually avoidable? Because, you know, saying our person when no gets money, you know how you go keep yourself exactly. so that you don't get into some kind of yeah, problem so that money cannot you, you don't have the money to so solve exactly so and for those people also that have um this high blood pressure i noticed that a lot of them do not even take the drugs they don't even know they have it what are some of the things we can begin to do so that we just prevent. you know prevent this okay that's a great question like i said majority of heart attacks and strokes are preventable majority not all but majority are preventable first thing Go for your yearly checkup, all right? And if they pick up things like diabetes, high blood pressure, 
they put you on the medications. Take the medications. Mm. Number one reason why people don't take their blood pressure medications, especially men, is it might sometimes affect your sexual functions. Oh. And that's why they don't take it. That's why, wow. And they won't tell anybody. They just notice that there's some issues there and then they stop taking the drugs. The next thing now is a stroke. Mm. And what I tell them is, mm. after you've had a stroke, everything's not going to work. So you might as well figure out how to do this. There are things we can do. There are over 1,000 drugs for high blood pressure. We can find a combination that will get your blood pressure down. All right, so one is taking your blood pressure medications. Two, diabetes. The epidemic of diabetes, where many of us are overweight. We need to watch our weight eat healthy. Mm. I used to weigh about 100 kilos. Yeah. And now weigh, what, 78. Wow. And it's all this diabetes and things. And uh, I was looking at the heart attack coming to me, and I said, okay, yeah, me better just uh, respect yourself. Okay. So I lost weight, and it wasn't too difficult. You just reduce your portions, exercise regularly, walk. 30 minutes a day is all you need. Mm. Four or five times a week. It really does help. So, and then that helps your sugar. Salt, hypertension. We eat too much salt in Nigeria. That's why we're one of the biggest hypertension capitals in the world. Yes. Nigeria is in the top five. Oh. Uh, <laughs> let me give you an example. Recommended salt intake is two grams of sodium a day. All right. In England, the average intake is four. And that's because there's a law that was passed about 15 years ago that restaurants and public food places can't add salt to the food. Yes. All right. You notice you go to England, uh, the food doesn't taste so nice. So you add your own salt. Okay. In America, it's about 6 grams. In Nigeria, the average salt intake is 12. Chineke. So when a Nigerian says it doesn't take much salt, it's taking too much. Now, sources of salt... Our oh, food will not be tasty. My mother-in-law will not eat my food. Though. She will say, ah, because you know, okay, yeah, yeah, good dear. I'm thinking... It's too much salt and for you. And you gradually you reduce it. I don't say no salt. No salt is not possible. Yeah. Uh, it would, uh, you, yeah. You, but it might make you lose weight too because mm. you can't eat. But um, hidden yeah. sources of salt. This life. Granuts, ekpa, cashew nuts, ah. potato chips, mm. plantain chips. Ah, auntie. Mm. Those are hidden sources of salt that we don't realize. Mm. All right. My, uh, so not the... Uh, you know, right, plantain. Bouillon cubes. Mm. and all these things, they're salty. Mm. So just reduce the quantity. I'm not saying stop. Right. Reduce the quantity. Ah, <sighs> doctor. Food will not be sweet. No, me. why can't I always say something? Now something will keep us. Something. Something. Why, yeah, yes, how can I die and not realize I stop Let it kill you when you're 90, oh. not when you're 40 or 50. Oh, okay, mm. I like that. We have to wrap up. <laughs> okay. I think we need to bring you back, Sam. Mm. No problem. Some of us need this... This um, tough, lecture, tough it's a nice lecture. lecture. I like, I like it. We, we need a reminder. Mm -hmm. We hate take fruits and vegetables, but this salt issue is very, very difficult to swallow. But it's no, all. But it, it's not difficult. You reduce it over time. Mm. So you get yeah, if you just do it drastically, your taste will adjust. Yes, your yeah. taste will adjust, okay. and then salt will now taste not nice to you. Yeah. Your friends are not coming to the house. I say, this your soup is not sweet, though. They should eat in yeah, your house. Eat in house. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank sir. You, it was a pleasure having you on the show. I think um, this foundation is an opportunity for many Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that um, private people have come together to support Nigerians. And we hope that more Nigerians like you and, and your friends can come together to find ways. So I'm happy, just, just in case you missed it. If you have cardiology issues, it can be solved in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Orthopedic issues can be resolved yeah. Um, I think you said, um, I think renal, neurosurgery, renal, nephrology, more renal, specialties. nephrology, more specialties can be done in Nigeria. Yeah. Do your research before you can spend your hard earned dollars. Our hard earned dollars that should go to manufacturers it's to get equipment to yeah. help Nigeria. Mm. So you can use it to go and spend medical tourism where we can actually get it done here in Nigeria. That's all we can take on the show today. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.